Okay, so here was day three progress. A whole lot didn't get done. Due to the simple fact I had to build a boom pole to help me because my old one's just not strong enough to lift this tractor. Plus I had to go buy some new jack stands. The ones I got back there under the rear axle, they're actually a 12 ton stand. And the reason they're a 12 ton stand is just simply because of the height. That stand right there next to it is actually a six ton stand. It will not extend high enough to reach that axle. And to be honest, the 12 ton won't either. When I took those wheels off, which I didn't film just because it's kind of sketchy and I don't want you to do it the way that I did, because I don't want to be responsible for anybody getting hurt. The best way is just to barely lift the weight off of them and slide them off. You can keep the tire on the ground because they will come off. But I had to put a board under that stand to gain me an extra inch. Now, as you can see, there's no board under that stand now. Once I got everything on, or well, once I got the tire off. I lifted up the rear of the tractor again and took the board out so that stand would sit on the ground. Now I know there's a bunch of boards and blocks and everything right there in the transmission. That was actually a fail safe in case the tractor decided to get away from me. Because I put the front tires back on this tractor because I took them off. But the tractor wanted to roll forward since my jack stands are not level due to my ground being unlevel. So I put that there as a fail safe and it probably saved me because the tractor tried to roll forward on me. I'm probably just going to leave that there as a fail safe but we'll see. But you can kind of tell right there that one jack stand one there on the left looks a little crooked. But what I'm going to start working on today is I want to go ahead and get both sides of the bearings off in the hub. And I'm only going to film one side because they're the same on both sides. And then we'll pull the spindle out of the knee. Well, that's what we're end game is. We have to take the steering links off and the steering arm and then pull the spindle out of the knee. Now the knee I'm going to leave for the time being because that's where the jack stand is. Now once I get ready to pull the engine, I'm going to rely probably on that <laughs> and I will remove the jack stands at that point, take that off, take that guy off, pull all this framework off and pull the engine. And all that's gonna be done in very rapid succession to try to keep as much weight from hanging off the front of this tractor as possible. Okay, the first thing to do to get this hub assembly off is we're gonna take the dust cap off. Now note, this one has a grease fitting on it. These tractors never had a grease fitting in the dust cap. Somebody added this to keep pumping grease in here. So, first thing we're gonna do which one thing I can tell you it'll probably be easier if you do it is to go ahead and knock this cap off while you still got the wheel on see so it wants to roll so it might fight me here we'll see okay it comes off see I don't know if you can pick that up on camera but that bearing don't sound too good And there's a good shot of how wore out the bushings are in the axle knee. Wheel bearings themselves aren't moving. That's actually in our spindle. And one thing I didn't do whenever I got down here was grab me a rag. Because 
even without the grease fitting, these things are going to be covered in grease. So be prepared for that. Now, I'm actually going to replace this bearing cap. Dennis Carpenter actually reproduces them, made out of cast steel. Just like these originals, they're pretty nice. And they're cheap. I mean, you could probably take and weld it up and grind it and smooth it, but I just replaced it. Or will be replacing it. Well, the first thing you're going to run into is a cotter pin. So, it's a bender cotter pin. And get it out. And like I say, with all cotter pins, just replace them. They're cheap. You ain't got to worry about failures, so just replace them. But go ahead and take this nut off. And right now, there's no need to get this nut overly clean, and I'll show you why here in a second. Now, in here, first thing we're going to encounter is a washer with a notch in it. Now, that notch is keyed to our spindle. And don't forget the washer when you put it back. So the next thing is what they call the outer bearing. It's this little guy right here. This is actually a Timken bearing right here. So like I say, I like Timken bearings. They're made in the USA. Good quality bearing. However, you can clean these, repack them, but I am not. For the simple fact, you can get this bearing set for you know about ten dollars. I think I got both sides for right at twenty something. You know, that's with tax and everything. So, store in the tractor, replace it. Okay, now, this is just a temporary thing, but as you can see, there's another bearing in here called the inner bearing, right there. There's also this dust seal. Now, the easiest way to get this guy off is to take your nut. Thread it back onto your spindle. Which I know you can't really see that right now because my hands and everything's in the way. But there we go. We're gonna thread that on there. Now, you're gonna pull it to where it catches. It may take a time or two. Oh. And you're basically going to use the nut, there we go, to pull the bearing and the seal out at the same time. And this hub is slammed full of grease. And you don't want these bearings hubs slammed full of grease. Because you need room for the grease to expand thermally from one second it's just wasteful and messy so our seal will be replaced and our bearing will be replaced probably the hardest part of this whole job is jacking the tractor up second hardest part is dealing with all the grease because it is a bunch especially whenever you have 
one like this that somebody has just pumped full and full and full of grease and there's there's no need for that there's a look at all the grease in there that's way too much grease that's all there is to it to get the bearings off and then whenever time comes to put it back together I'll have the video of packing the bearings and reassembling it. My next step is going to be getting this tie rod out. And once this guy's off, we'll go ahead and take this steering arm off, which is this bolt right here. It's just another pinch bolt. Once that bolt's out, should be able to pull up this arm, take the keyway out, and then our sp actual spindle will come out of the knee. And it's probably covered in grease as well because these actually have grease fittings on them from Ford. And they should be periodically greased. You know. So first things first, our favorite friend, the cotter pin. This is why I say if you're going to restore one of these tractors, just go ahead and get you a cotter pin assortment because you're going to need it. Normally I'd be using a socket on this, but I don't have them out here right now, so. I got an adjustable, so that's what we're going to use. Well, that's what I was hoping to use. However, as you can see, the lower part of my joint is spinning. So, there's two ways you could go about this. Technically, there's three. If you're lucky, an impact will pull it off. That's number one. The second is to put pressure up on this to ram the joint up into your arm to put some friction pressure on it to help get it off. Your third option is to actually, this is hard as a rock, is to actually reach in here with a pair of vice grips and grab the joint itself and hold it and spin it. In my current situation, with my limited tool availability down here, I'm going to try the jack first. If you have access to an impact, do it first. Try to put a little bit of upward pressure on it. And that worked. That's all it took. And as you see, my jack stand is still on, or it still has the weight of the tractor. And there's a nut. And I'm not sure why there's a washer here. I'm pretty sure that should not be there. They more than likely did it to clear this joint. But that kind of makes me wonder, is this joint been replaced or not? And if you're wondering, this high lift jack is what I used to lift this tractor. Regular floor jack won't go high enough. There's a chance that as loose as that was, I will not have to use a pickle fork on this. I'll use the uh, crescent hammer. And it just fell right out. 
Okay, so now our spindle is completely loose. A lot of up and down play, which when tractor's on the ground, that's not really going to hurt you much. So this side doesn't really show it too bad. But there's a lot of, I guess you call it lateral play, if you want to call it that, of the spindle actually moving in the knee. There's a bushing here and a bushing here. The ADN, these two are the same bushing. On probably your 53 up to at least the 64s, these are different. Both are available. The 65 is probably a different bushing. But I'm not sure because I haven't messed with one of them. Okay, let's see how stubborn this guy's going to be. Okay, now on this tractor, these arms are side specific. The bolt will go towards the rim. Um, a regular tractor, I don't think they are. I think they're the same for left and right. And that shiny spot right there. They had too wide of tire on here. I think they had a six and a half inch, and I think factory's supposed to be five. Which I think Mate 61 has a six inch tire. But anyway, there's the arm off. Woodruff key. Now, the spindle. come out they usually fall out but I think this seal that's hard as crap was holding me up these are remade so they'll be it'll be replaced and there's our spindle and whoo boy that burns toast <laughs> uh, this is not supposed to be a multi-piece bearing. This is actually a single piece, but it decided to come apart. See? That should not happen. And these bearings are available. Now that's ready to be cleaned and sandblasted. And like I say, we'll paint this part here in the very top. Now this joint, it felt tight. So should be able to reuse that. It might have just been because of the washer on top. We should be 100% honest with you. This joint may end up getting replaced anyway. Because for some reason, right in through here, right along the edge of the tube, all the threads are ground off. Last thing I want to do is be driving the tractor in the tie rod fall apart on me. So I'm not sure what the heck's going on there. Phew. Huh. 
Why is that, I wonder? Okay, I think I may have just found why there was a washer on my knuckle. I'm sitting here looking. These outer tie rod ends on both sides are two different diameters. And that clamp there, right here, appears to be a three bolt style of joint. I can spin it around where the camera will see that. No, I can't get the camera to see it at its current angle. But there's a groove cut here that the bolt would actually go in to lock this guy in place. So somebody has taken these joints and ground them down so they would slide in there. So these joints are not the right joints to this tractor. And I'm not 100% sure I can even get those joints. Or for that matter, how to even get this guy out of here. It might be something where I have to take the rod, the entire rod, and set it on a workbench or a press or something on this little lip here and get me a long ramrod and try knocking that thing out. So I guess for the time being, instead of disassembling this thing, I'm just going to loosen it up here and spin this whole assembly off because I know that this is wanting to turn up there already. So actually that joint right there just spun on me. See that? Which I mean, they do work, but that's just kind of iffy hack together crap. And I don't like doing that whenever I'm restoring stuff. Especially whenever I'm going to be using it. I don't want some rig part that's going to fail on me whenever I least want it to. You can kind of see that notch. I'll definitely try to fix this and make it correct. Okay, so the only thing left over here at the moment is this guy. This inner tie rod, if you want to call it that. Ball joint, whatever. Probably what I'll do is just leave that on this little piece here. And then I'll just pull this off of the tractor and do it on the workbench. But it's basically like I've done on the other ones. You know, take the cotter pin, the nut, and then just mug it with a pickle fork. So that's kind of it for disassembling on this side. Because, like I say, tractor setting on the axle I can't really remove anything else I could go ahead and take the radius rod out which I might end up moving the jack stands before I do that anyway just because this will help stabilize this axle since that's holding the tractor probably best just to leave it there as long as I can So probably my next thing is going to be to tear the other side apart and then come in here and get this guy off which is probably going to entail 
maybe unbolting something down there or maybe taking the big nut off up top here that holds the actual steering gear but for now I'm gonna go ahead and work on the other side do what I did on over here over there